Did you know that every organism's DNA is a history book that can be used to determine the fate of our Earth? And we now have the technology to read it. We can use DNA to look back in time to predict the future. In today's Odyssey, we'll discuss the DNA of a small Antarctic octopus that may have solved a long-lasting mystery of when the rapidly melting West Antarctic ice sheet last collapsed, unlocking valuable information about how much future sea levels may rise in a warming climate. That's what scientists are currently doing instead of relying on geological sampling. They're peering into worlds long gone through DNA glasses. The octopus we're talking about is known as Turkitz octopus. This tiny reddish-brown creature weighs up to one pound. They live on the seafloor all around Antarctica, but individuals don't move far from home because Antarctica is so vast that populations in different regions are too far away to breed with one another. Their lifestyle also prevents them from traveling too far away because parents must put significant effort into ensuring their offspring hatch. On the bottom of the seafloor, they plant relatively few, but large eggs. What makes this octopus so special is that it has a unique adaptation that allows it to survive in the frozen Antarctic waters, a special protein in its blood that acts like a natural antifreeze. This same protein was found when scientists collected and sequenced the DNA of 96 Turquoise octopi from different regions around Antarctica. Deep under West Antarctica lies gaps in the rocks. At present, these are filled by the ice sheet, making the Weddell, Amundsen and Ross Seas separate from each other. If the ice sheet melted in the past, the octopi could have interbred and exchanged genes. And if the sheet didn't melt, none of this could happen. There's no way of knowing through typical scientific observation, but the actual story is clearly seen in the DNA. Yes, the three octopi populations all share the same protein from a common ancestor that lived long ago, when the West Antarctic ice sheet wasn't blocking the seaways. Time periods between ice ages are called interglacials. The history of genetic mixing indicated the last interglacial occurred 125,000 years ago, and it was warmer than pre-industrial levels. The temperature was about 1.5 degrees Celsius higher than before humans started burning coal, oil and gas regularly. So to recap, this means that Antarctica was melted before the greenhouse pollution of the Industrial Revolution. This means it will definitely melt with zero doubt with today's much higher world temperatures. The temperature is rising much faster now than it did in the past. The last time the Earth went from an ice age to an interglacial, it took about 5,000 years. But the temperature we have now could have been reached in just 110 years. That's a big difference, ahem, an alarming difference. In the words of many famous astronauts, hello Houston, we have a problem. This threatens multiple major cities that will end up being flooded by up to 15 feet, and it's not a maybe. Now here's a short list of cities that will be affected by the new global sea levels. New York City, Shanghai, Mumbai, Panama City, Miami, Vienna, and the 1,200 islands of Maldives. I hate to say this, Governor DeSantis, but denying science and global warming won't stop the state of Florida being over 70% underwater. So say goodbye to your court hearings opponent, Disney World. Who will be left for him to pester? He'll be the sure bet for winning the bad guy role in Aquaman's next film. Back to our topic, here are a few suggestions toward easing the coming ecological disasters. Humans must acknowledge the rising sea levels in advance. Politicians of the world must stop denying the real threat this poses to their constituency for meagre and vain publicity. The world's populations must adapt to the sea level rise that's coming by relocating heavily populated water's edge and coastal cities. We must embrace green technologies that ease pollution and temperature warming trends. We can switch to renewables like solar and wind energy, trade gas guzzlers for electric cars or public transit, support local sustainable businesses, get involved in climate campaigns, and urge leaders to adopt ambitious emission reduction policies supporting clean energy. Something must be done to educate large population bases who are still in denial, so we'll have a chance. Victoria University Antarctic Modelling Hub shows that climate decisions made this decade will affect the Antarctic ice sheet for centuries. It's clear how multiple people are dependent on fossil fuels and don't show any concern for what this does, but by doing so, they aren't discerning what future they're leading for our children. 
Yes, the hour is late, but it is not too late. Our planet's future was in our hands all along. Thank you for embarking on this enlightening odyssey with us. We encourage you to share your opinion in the comments section of what your thoughts are, and hopefully you found this helpful. Subscribing is a form of bookmarking the channel to see more of our awesome content. We explore green technologies in our other videos. Stay curious, and we'll see you in the next odyssey.